Hi, in this video, we're going to take a look at this wonderful book. It's called Letters from a Stoic, the Ancient Classic. This is by Seneca with an introduction by Donald Robertson. Um, I purchased a hardcover. This is a hardcover and it comes with a dust jacket, which you can take off. Let's take it off just so we can get a good look here at the book. Very nice book. Very, very nice. And smell it. Mm, it smells good. Wonderful book. And I'm pretty happy with the hardcover. Um, it's well made. It's good quality. Let's go ahead and put the hardcover back on. The introduction spends a lot of time uh, talking about Seneca and who he was as a man. I'll show you all that. So it has an introduction. It's not just the letters from the Stoic. It has some extra stuff. Most of the books you buy uh, on Seneca, usually they, they, ha they add something to them. Right? These are all public domain books. So this has stuff in it that's added to it uh, by this person here, Donald Robertson. And these people are very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, good at explaining what they do. They're, they're, these are professionals in you know, the fields. This is the capstone edition, first published in 2021, it says. And so here are some of the contents. And the nice thing about this book is you can look at the contents and you can decide like what you want to read. So like on the use of time, on discursiveness and reading, on the true and false friendship, on the terrors of death, on the philosopher's mean, on sharing knowledge, on crowds, on the philosopher's seclusion. So you get different, uh, different, different things you can read. And I've read, I don't want to say I've read most of the book, but I've certainly read quite a few chapters and some chapters more than once. And I think it's worth it. I think this is a book that can help people. It can give you guidance. It can help with clarity of thought. I'm not saying that, you know, if you're, if you're going through a hard time, should you read this? Sure. But even if you're not, I think that this can bring value to your life. Yeah, it's got a lot. Of, it's got a lot of topics, right? On good company, on grief for lost friends, on the philosopher's task, on the first cause. And again, I don't, I don't agree with everything Seneca says. I don't think that this is like, oh, you know, if it's in Seneca, it's true. You know, you should always use critical thinking. Um, that's something that uh, we all should do anytime we read anything. Here it talks a lot about Seneca. So here it talks about it and who he is. And just very historical stuff here. Uh, this is by Donald Robertson, Education and Influences, Seneca's Family. I have not read any of this. I have not read any of this stuff because, yes, it is interesting to me, but I just, I just haven't gotten to it. And, and I probably will read it, but I am personally more interested in what Seneca says. But if you care about the history, which is important, it's good to know, um, and I'm sure I'll read it someday, you can read this. Here it talks a little bit about Donald Robertson as well. Donald Robertson is a writer, trainer, and cognitive behavioral psycho psychotherapist. So he's very qualified. That's the word I was looking for. He's a very qualified person to you know, have an intro. He specializes in the relationship between ancient philosophy and modern evidence-based psychological therapy. Donald is the author of six books on philosophy and psychotherapy. Wow. Including Stoic Stoicism. I hope I'm saying that right. Stoic. I know it's Stoic. So it's Stoicism or Stoicism. Please correct me if I'm wrong and The Art of Happiness, and How to Think Like a Roman Emperor. Oh, that's pretty cool. He provided the introduction for the capstone edition of Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. So I have, I actually have Meditations, but I don't have, uh, I don't have the capstone edition. I have a different one, so. As a collector of math books and science books, I also collect philosophy books. So this is definitely one to get if you have any interest in philosophy. And then here he talks about On the Use of Time, From Seneca to His Friend Lucilius. Continue to act thus, my dear Lucilius. Set yourself free for your own sake. Gather and save your time, which till lately has been forced from you or filched away or has merely slipped from your hands. Yeah. Make yourself believe the truth of my words, that certain moments are torn from us. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. That some are gently removed and that others glide beyond our reach. The most disgraceful kind of loss, however, is that due to carelessness. Furthermore, if you will pay close heed to the problem, you will find that the largest portion of our life passes while we are doing ill, a goodly share while we are doing nothing, and the whole while we are doing that which is not the purpose. What man can you show me who places any value in his time, 
who reckons the worth of each day, who values, who understands that he is dying daily. For we are mistaken when we look forward to death. The major portion of death has already passed. Whatever years lie behind us are in death's hands. And he, I, he always ends with farewell. He always ends with farewell. So let's just jump ahead. So like, he talks about reading. Let's just go to something else. And obviously some of them are more interesting than others. Um, you know, it just depends what, what, what you're interested in, what you're looking for. I think it's all worth reading. I think it's going to give you some perspective. Again, I have not read the whole book. And so here's, here's on living to oneself. And notice here he ends, farewell. Let's just read a little bit. I got to give it a whiff. Oh, incredible, incredible. So on living to oneself, this is chapter 10. Yes, I do not change my opinion. Avoid the many, avoid the few, avoid even the individual. I know of no one with whom I should be willing to have you shared. And see what an opinion of you I have, for I dare to trust you with your own self. Yeah, I'm living to oneself. No thoughtless person ought to be left alone. In such cases he plans only he only plans folly and heaps up future dangers for himself or for others. He brings into play his base desires. The mind displays what fear or shame used to repress. It wets his boldness, stirs his passions, and goads his anger. And finally, the only benefit that solitude confers, the habit of trusting no man and of fearing no witness, is lost to the fool, for he betrays himself. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely um, something you can read slowly and think about. What's this here? I mean, you can just open it up and start reading. I do not wonder, for the fault is not in the wealth, but in the mind itself. That which made poverty a burden to us has made riches also a burden. Just as it matters little whether you lay a sick man on a wooden or on a golden bed, for with whoever he be moved, he will carry his malady with him. So one need not care whether the diseased mind is bestowed upon riches or upon poverty. His malady goes with the man. Farewell. Yeah. On festivals and fasting. I haven't read this one yet. So you can see what the book is like. Uh, if you're just looking for like something to read before bed or just maybe, you know, something to wind down with, I, I think this is a good book. It's good bedtime reading. Um, if you have time in your day where you read, I think reading is important. I read, I read every day. And... Yeah, I think it's good for you. It's good for your mind. So, yeah, give it a whiff here one more time. Ah, Letters from a Stoic, the ancient classic. Uh, very happy with this book. Uh, again, this particular edition is nice. It has that introduction by Donald Robertson. Uh, and then it's got uh, the Letters from Seneca. I hope it's been helpful. Take care.